Today on the show, I'm happy to have Rangan Venkataman. He's the CEO of Pinnacle.ai. They're an enterprise security software company. You were just telling me success is not earned. Success is not owned. It is rented and the rent is due every day. This is my philosophy in terms of how we operate. And it's an extremely important philosophy that we try and teach even within the company. And it's a philosophy that we follow. It's extremely important for the simple reason that in a world where everything changes so rapidly, whether it is our work in AI, whether it's our work in cybersecurity, there's clearly no destination. The destination is actually progress. And in order to make progress, in order to have a beginner's mindset, it is so important to note that you can celebrate milestones, but you have to make sure that it's a continuum. And in order for the continuum to stay alive, you have to pay your rent each day. So how is it that you pay rent to strive towards that? Simple. It starts with very simple things. And uh, I'll basically say that it starts with finding a simple idea and taking it very seriously. Good ideas are rare. When you find one, you have to bet heavily on it. Humans, for example, have been writing down great ideas for 5,000 years. It's important to understand that wisdom. And more than importantly, it is actually to avoid stupid mistakes. And it is even more important than actually trying to be smart. It really starts there. And then the other way you do this is you don't sell anything you wouldn't buy yourself. And that's really how it starts. And I think the focus on that means that you are in the now. You focus on what you control for the absolute moment. Let me give you a case in point. If I go to my customer's meeting, if I go to any customer's meeting, as an example, the golden rule within the company is to make sure that we treat it like a visit to a temple, a church, a mosque, a synagogue, respectively. You, you give it the credence that it deserves. Go well prepared. Make sure that you understand the actions you need to take. Give that client a 100% focus. I've seen very many meetings go badly because they don't come prepared for it. They come with an open mindset and they wing it. We don't believe in that. Luck is manufactured. And the luck is manufactured when opportunity meets preparedness. That's really how we do it. What does betting heavily in, on an idea look like to you? The way we look at it is that one wisdom that we follow among many things is pursue one idea and make it your life. There are many success principles that can be followed, but I believe less is more. And following an idea and taking that to the point where you're insanely great at it. Let me give you a simple thought process to consider. The way we approach it is we pursue idea, an idea or ideas where we are immensely passionate about. Secondly, we have to believe that we can be the best at it. Whether it is our best or the best in the world needs to be figured out over time. The goal is to absolutely pursue an idea that you're immensely passionate about. And the goal is to be the absolute best you possibly can be in it. My definition of an entrepreneur is someone who pursues a novel idea, but with very limited resources. That's what happens. So if you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to be very careful about the idea you pursue because you have limited resources. So you can't pursue too many things and hope that you're going to be really good at it. The belief system says that you'd rather be insanely great at something rather than be average at many things. Last but not the least, the idea should not only take you to being the best you possibly can be and be passionate about it, but you also have to make sure that it's monetizable, which means that there is a business case to make money. So stress testing the ideas. What should somebody do to make sure it meets all these requirements? So in order to stress test any idea, run experiments. I'm a big believer that you can have a hypothesis, but you actually have to run experiments. We are a big believer in running experiments. So every time we have an idea, we run an experiment on it and see whether the idea has any meat behind it, whether there is a case, real case behind it. And that is an extremely important thing because you have to make sure yeah. that you are willing to take risks, but you balance it out by ensuring that you're taking calibrated risks and you know the pros and cons. Even if you know that the risks are high, if you do that with awareness, it's a lot better. I consider ideas in the following categories. Unknown. You really want to go from unknown all the way to hopefully known or known known. 
So you have to really classify your ideas in these buckets. So how do you apply all these principles within Pinnacle and the companies that you work in? Great question. Very simple thing. We look at every idea or everything that we do as reversible or irreversible. If you, very many companies again get this wrong where they may be putting the same weight on a decision to buy a car versus buy a pen. We really look at it and say, what is it a bi-directional relationship with the decision, which is between that is it something I can unwind myself from in case it goes badly? Because if it's a really great idea and if it's a phenomenal idea, you have to remember one thing that it carries risks, it carries copycats, carries many of these things. Unless I'm copying somebody else's idea, the risks are highly unknown. So if the idea is original, you have a lot of things that you really can't know ahead of time. So the only thing that you can really do is Classify them in the right buckets so that you can pursue them with a degree of sanity. How do you bring sanity? Bring sanity by making sure that if you're pursuing this path, you have an exit strategy out of it. And if you believe it's an irreversible decision, then you have to make sure that you put the necessary baits on that decision so that you know exactly what you're getting into. However, I'll say to you, most decisions tend to be skewed towards reversible. And even if it's an irreversible decision, can we figure out to what point can you reverse? And afterwards, of course, every decision becomes irreversible. So that allows you to make sure that you have the right data points to make that decision. The goal is to make high quality, high velocity decisions. And the only way you can enable high quality, high velocity decisions is to make sure that you have a framework that you can think it through and apply it consistently and repeat it. So building out that framework, that's a key part to this. Absolutely. And it's part of the culture. Either it's part of the culture or it's not. And that allows, see, as an entrepreneur, if I'm pursuing a novel idea and I want to make sure I'm doing it with limited resources, I have to make sure I spend the limited resources, whether it's capital, whether it's human capital, whether it's financial capital, any of those things have to be deployed wisely. And the only way you can deploy them wisely is balancing it out where you're investing in the right ideas and where a new idea emerges, which could be a sub-idea or a completely brand new idea, you're running very controlled experiments. And that allows you to really know the viability of the idea most of the time. You can only imagine so far. Our imagination can only go so far. Beyond that, imagination has to be validated. So if somebody wanted to learn more about Pinnacle and the services you guys offer, how could they? Reach me directly at Rangan at resilience.com. And we can also be reached at pinnacle.ai. Okay. Thank you, Rangan, for coming on the show. And thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. Make sure to smash that subscribe button. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki, and we'll see you next time.